Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be doing a full build video for the Hobby Boss 1350 scale German Navy. This is the Type 212 submarine. Uh, it's a fairly simple little model to build. It's kind of a fun little model. Um, and uh, it's kind of small. So here you can see I'm gluing the two halves of the submarine together. I first use the um, standard Revell Contacted Professional uh, glue with a metal tip. And then I help to seal the edges together with some Tamir Extra Thin Cement. And here you can see I'm uh, sealing the other side. And that gets in all the nooks and little crannies and helps to seal it. I like this thin cement because it doesn't leave much in the way of residual. Now I'm going to be cutting off the uh, parts for the stand. I use side cutters and then uh, sand off the extra little parts and then glue them into the base. So here I'm going again using the Ravel Contacted Professional. Now I glue those in and then leave it to dry. Now also you can see I'm using the extra thin cement just to help smooth out some of the edges. It softens them. Uh, here I'm using a blade uh, to cut the uh, photo edge parts out and uh, this leaves behind a little residual metal uh, on the edges that needs to be sanded. So now I'm back with the uh, submarine and I'm gluing the uh, top part together and uh, here you can see it didn't fit quite so well uh, needed a little bit of extra sanding um, and then uh, we've got some of the um, masts and uh, antenna and these will be glued into the top of the submarine. And so first I'm just placing them uh, in here just to line them up. I've already put a little bit of glue uh, at the bottom to hold them into place. And once I've put them in, then you have to line them up and make sure that they are uh, vertical. Now we also have uh, the little winglets on the side. And these are also glued into position. I guess you could change the angle if you really wanted to, but I just wanted to have them flat. And uh, so these are glued in both sides, uh, again with the Revell Contacted Professional. And then also um, I fill in the gaps with the extra thin cement. So the last of the uh, masts are now going on. And uh, you can see I'm kind of trying to line them up so that they are in the correct uh, angle. There was this one little piece that's supposed to go at the back and the glue kind of melted it a little bit too much so it ended up being shorter than it was required and so I left it as best as I could it was a very frustrating little piece of plastic now on the back here uh, you put the uh, axle here for the screw or the propeller and uh, I decided not to use the photo etch uh, because it was very flat and looked uh, really unrealistic so I prepared the uh, the plastic one you can use the photo etch one uh, if you like and I'm gluing everything together now because I'd like to paint it all together uh, rather than painting each individual piece uh, so uh, a few more of the masts and antenna to go on and uh, then line them up now submarines are a fairly simple uh, subject matter because most of it's just the hull uh, but there are some of these extra little details uh, that you can add and that's what uh, makes things interesting now the back uh, fins were a little annoying initially I when I put them on I think you can see here I'm putting them on backwards that's actually incorrect it's supposed to go on the other way and so once I figure this out I then turn them around and they then uh, fit on um, in the correct angle both forward and backward as well as side to side. I didn't want to have big globs of glue uh, here so I used the extra thin cement uh, to get them uh, to stick and then I lined them up with my tweezers. Here you can see I'm doing the next one also just by helping to melt the plastic a little bit and then holding in place until it is bonded. And uh, now we've got the last remaining one and again using the extra thin cement. Now once these are all dry and um, in the correct orientation uh, then we're going to switch back to the photo etch. So here you can see I'm using my, my scalpel again, my blade, to cut out this photo etched um, wire. It's supposed to represent a wire and um, it is a little frustrating to cut out because it kept bending and so here I'm kind of trying to flatten it against the uh, cardboard 
uh, but it's a very delicate and flimsy piece of photo etch. It has to fit onto the ends of the uh, rear fins, and uh, it was a very annoying and um, frustrating piece to get on because it would keep flipping on and off and didn't fit exactly. Now there was a little gap here in the side, and so I used the plastic putty. This is by Vallejo, and uh, this stuff does um, go on pretty easily. It's also very easy to get rid of, um, so I typically wipe off the extra once it's filled the gap. Uh, it does also fill your panel lines, so you have to be careful of that. Now, there are these tiny little pieces um, on the photo edge, and here I'm looking around for it, and then I realize it's actually on my finger. Um, there's the other, there's that little piece, um, and these are going to go on the uh, top of the submarine. So usually these things will jump when you cut them. Uh, and so what I tend to do is put my finger on top of it so it doesn't have the opportunity to fly very far or bounce off. Now, I, I don't currently have a photo etch bender or um, tool, so I was just using two pairs of tweezers um, and bending it to try and get the correct shape um, with the angle. Now I'm using super glue. This is the only way to really uh, get this stuff to stick. Um, and this is the little guard tower on top of the submarine and so now I'm putting that in place and it's going to have to then uh, stick as best it can but that super glue does leave um, extra residue now once that's done um, I'm spraying this here with my airbrush and uh, this is a gray primer and this is the uh, Vallejo gray primer. You do have to thin it out in order to spray it, uh, but I give the whole model a, a fairly decent coat, not too thick because I don't want to fill the panel lines, uh, but I do spray the whole thing. And once it's dry, I then uh, do the other side of the model. Uh, you can do top and bottom, front and back. Uh, this just happened to be easy to do front and back. And uh, so you can see I've primed the whole thing. Here I'm also priming the base. Uh, this is probably an unnecessary step as I ended up painting it black with the black primer. Uh, but here you can see I've, uh, I'm spraying this uh, to get it ready for paint. Now I am doing some uh, pre-shading along some of the uh, lines. It doesn't show up all that well in the finished model. Um, I didn't want it to be obnoxious. Most uh, pre-shading for some reason when modelers do it, uh, it's so... Uh, obvious that it is uh, excessive. So now we're back to the stand and I'm using a black primer uh, just because I have lots of it and uh, I'm painting the whole stand black and uh, you can see how I paint at different angles to be able to get uh, all the way around it. And now I'm back to the submarine itself while the stand dries. I'm using Tamiya XF84 and I'm spraying the bulk of the uh, submarine this color. Um, and once I've got a good coat down, um, now that is drying, and I am now going to mount the brass sign, or this is photo edge, brass photo edge sign, uh, to the stand. Now I wanted to be able to show the text, and it doesn't show up very well, and so I'm using uh, the Tamiya, this is the black, pa the panel line, and um, I ended up uh, trying several different things with this um, that has to dry now and now I am masking off the submarine because I want to paint the top of it so I'm using some uh, thin end or narrow and wide masking tape and it was a little painful to get this uh, around the front of it but once I did this uh, then I'm sparing it with a it's actually a purple gray there's a slight tinge of purple to it, and this is really hard to find. I found it at an old hobby store. Um, so this is the RLM, uh, the gray violet. So that's now all dry, and now I'm going to mask off the top of it so that I can spray the top of it. You really have to make sure that your paint is dry before you mask on top of it. And then for the front, it was just too difficult to get the masking, and so I ended up just using some putty and uh, sticking that into position. So 
Now I am back to the stand and I tried some thinners to be able to see if I could get it to uh, remove off the uh, brass text but it ended up making uh, more of a mess so it wasn't what I wanted. I tried a an acrylic um, panel line accent uh, but this was really thin and did not show up well either so I wouldn't bother to do any of that. Um, I did try sanding it here and that seemed to bring out the text and border very nicely and so while that is drying now I'm back with the submarine. I'm spraying the top of it. This is a very dark gray. Uh, you can also do it as a black. So now that that's dry, I removed all of the masking tape and um, the masts are a little flimsy. So when you remove the masking tape, just make sure you don't rip out those antenna or masks. Um, so even though I pushed down pretty hard, you can see I have some bleed through uh, of the paint and um, also when you're removing the masking tape from the back that photo etch will come off again and again it's very frustrating so again here you can see some additional bleed through on those panel lines uh, and I had to hold the uh, rear wire in place that photo etch so now I'm just going to do some touch up here and um, this is with the XF84 again just touching up those um, bleed through areas just to make sure that uh, the colors aren't running into each other and um, this definitely required quite a few areas of uh, touch-up so again this is the Tamiya XF84 and um, yeah, I think it worked out quite well this this color combination so this front area here has two little bulges out of that RLM gray and uh, now I'm doing the other side uh, I'm trying not to get too much paint there because otherwise it looks terrible uh, here I'm doing the RLM, I think it's the grey, violet, and um, getting some of those areas. You can actually leave some of these lighter areas um, that have the dark run through because it looks like panel line accent, but um, some of it uh, was beyond the bounds of the panel line, and so I ended up just co uh, coloring it with the, this extra paint. So now that that's done, now I'm going to be painting the antenna and masts. And I'm doing this with a uh, black uh, color. And they're a little annoying to paint because they do overlap with each other. So it's kind of difficult to get in. Um, but uh, with a very fine paintbrush, I was able to do that. And now I'm painting the other side. Um, and um, the, just be careful not to paint too much uh, at the base because otherwise it'll spread to the top of the submarine. Um, so now that the um, uh, masts and antenna are painted, and now we're going to move on to uh, painting these two little areas here, these little hatches. And I just decided to freehand these. It's a fairly small little area and it'd be kind of painful to mask off and paint with, a, with an airbrush. So I just did a hand, hand paint there. Now the rear um, propeller or the screw of the submarine is supposed to be gold brass color and if you paint this just on top of a gray uh, it doesn't look good uh, and so the best way to paint uh, metallic colors is to first have a dark uh, undercoat and then to paint uh, the gold or brass on top and so I ended up doing um, just keeping that uh, dark base and then doing um, the first layer here, yeah, this is with uh, gold, and then once it was dry, uh, I did a second layer just to um, get rid of some of that patchy area. Now, we're back to the masts and um, adding some silver detail here, and this is um, on both sides. Just remember to get the front and the back as well, because sometimes when you're doing the sides, you won't get the front and the back as well. So. <clears throat> mast and antenna are done and now here we are back again at the screw doing a second coat and as you can see it's a much fuller look it covers up some of those areas uh, that kind of showing through and um, it gives you a much better result just needed two coats um, and it looks more like a, a metal now we're starting with the decals um, I use uh, the Microsol and Microset 
uh, to be able to soften the decals and get them to adhere a bit better. And um, I put them on the brush. These are pretty small decals uh, because it's such a small model. And um, these decals are also a little bit of a pain to get them to line up because they are following a non-straight line as the body of the submarine curves. But uh, after lots and lots of manipulation, some of it done off camera, um, I managed to get these uh, lines. These are the depth gauges. So I, I did remove some of the extra um, fluid using a um, Q-tip or a um, earbud. Now we've got the uh, letters for the submarine. And uh, again, also just getting them to set uh, using Microset Microsol. Here's the other side use an airbrush sometimes the, sorry use the uh, brush the brush sometimes doesn't grab it well and so I will use something uh, a little uh, stiffer like uh, the tweezers but you can scratch it now once the uh, decal is in place you, as you can see I switched from the brush to the um, tweezers again once it's in place I then squeeze out all the extra water um, or micro sole and micro set and I do that using the um, earbud or q-tip you can see I'm doing that again that really helps it to get into the panel lines and take up some of the curvature of that as well as it gets into stick uh, much better now here are the uh, depth uh, gauges as well uh, this is for the front and uh, I had to look at a uh, um, a photograph of the actual submarine to be able to get these to line up with the correct place which is at the start of that little hatch uh, in the front. Here I'm using my fingers to help position them. As you can see they're not exactly straight. That's one of the challenges of having something flat go against a really curved surface. But Now we're doing the um, rear depth gauges again and uh, be careful not to rip off that photo etched uh, wire antenna because I, I did that uh, twice. But uh, suck away the extra, you can see how that extra fluid disappears into the Q-tip and then um, push it down. Same thing for the other side and um, position that one. Now we've got some the depth gauges in the middle. This is a very long one. It's a little frustrating to work with because it kept uh, trying to move. And so what I should have done was just added some extra water to get it to float uh, while I positioned it. So here you can see me adding the extra water uh, to get it to float. And I'm trying to get underneath of it uh, to get it to move, but it was quite stubborn and did not really want to move. So finally I'm using the um, tweezers, but um, this did end up um, bending the top portion, which I then had to unravel in order to get it to... Uh, work. Now finally I settled on the method that I was going to use to um, highlight the text here on this little plaque and that was just to dump a whole bunch of the panel line accent uh, to really make it dark. I probably just could have used black paint um, but now that's going to dry and I'm back to the submarine and I'm now coating this with um, an acrylic clear coat um, and uh, this is a, a satin finish and that's going to seal in the decals. I actually left this uh, overnight. Now I'm going to sand off the extra part of the panel line accent and it highlights the uh, brass quite well. And that's uh, exactly what I was looking for. It just took me several times to try and figure out how to do that. Now here's something that was quite frustrating was dealing with this flag. I didn't have any um, solid metal that wasn't going to bend so I used a, a piece of um, a solder which is quite flexible but I had to get this flag to wrap around on itself um, and then stay there without bending this piece of solder but I really wanted to have the flag on there, this, the German flag um, and then um, to be able to have this on the model because that's what the real submarine has when it uh, sails particularly into the harbor. So now I've got some super glue and I'm gluing it into place, but uh, this was a real pain. It was a little sticky and kept sticking to the uh, to the tweezers. And uh, every time I'd push it, it would end up bending the solder. Finally managed to get it to, uh, to be where I wanted it to be. 
and um, we finally got the flag there. So now I'm using some glue just to stiffen up that flag and that is super glue and then um, we're going to do some panel line accent now. So the panel line accent um, I decided to use a gray and um, it wasn't quite as uh, obnoxious or um, annoying as the dark black would be but I'm, I'm putting this here into the panel lines and um, kind of panning around just to make it a little bit dirty as well and um, then we go all the way around but when it dries it leaves a, a shine there so um, you have to remove some of it and this is done using the um, what I actually ended up using was a lacquer thinner and it really should have been enamel thinner so don't use lacquer thinner it will eat your paint as you can see here it's starting to eat the paint so I didn't push it a whole lot um, extra at this point because that would have uh, gone all the way through um, the model but um, yeah that was a mistake don't use lacquer, lacquer thinner uh, this is an enamel and it just needs to be an enamel thinner so I did touch up this area as I was not happy with the um, with that end result and uh, there's the touch ups now the touch ups done and uh, now I'm sealing it here with the final satin uh, clear coat and um, and then I'm going to leave this to dry so once the front and the back were done I left it to dry and then put it on the stand and here are the finished photos I hope you enjoy it